How many have you forgiven today? Chapter 16, Rock in a Hard Place. So why are you getting dressed for the evening again? Bonbon bon asks as she adjusts Anon's tie. Anon has been getting ready for his outing with Pinky and her friend for the past hour or so. Hill admits to being a bit nervous at meeting a new pony, but trusts that Pinky has everything under control. He's just thankful that Bon Bon is willing to give him an outside perspective on how he looks. Pinky wants me to meet a friend of hers. I guess she set the meeting up at some fancy restaurant. Bon Bon gives Anon a skeptical look. Seems kind of weird if you ask me. She falls onto all fours and paces around Anon to make sure there's not a single piece out of place. We're talking about Pinky, Bon Bon. Bon Bon stops as she looks up at Anon, thinking for a moment before giving a shrug. Uh, I guess you're right about that. Everything looks to be in order. Anon looks himself over in the mirror. He must admit that he looks rather nice. He doesn't care much about his appearance on a day by day, but he wants to set a good first impression, if only for Pinky's sake. Thanks, Bon Bon. No problem. Just don't stay out too late. Remember, we have our celebration tomorrow and the party a day after that. Oh, yeah. To think, time moves so slowly when you're having traumatizing events happen to you. Thanks for the reminder. I'll be sure to get in before midnight. Alright, now hurry up before Lyra finds out what you're doing. She'll probably try to follow you. That's something Anon wants to avoid at all costs. Great idea. Anon pats Bon Bon on the head. See ya. She slaps his hand away playfully. Go, enjoy your night making friends. We'll see how that goes. Anon walks out of the bathroom door and peeks his head out into the hallway. No lie runs sight. Doing his best to tread carefully, Anon manages to escape the store without Lyra finding out. It's a bit early for his meeting with Pinky, but he's fine with wait. Hey! Anon jumps slightly at the sudden voice behind him, putting a hand to his chest to slow his heartbeat as he turns to face the pony responsible. Darf Pinky, what did I say about sneaking up on me? Pinky only smiles widely at him before speaking. Oh, I wasn't sneaking. I've been here the entire time. You've been standing here waiting for- Anon finds his thoughts grind to a halt as he takes a good look at Pinky. This isn't the Pinky that he's used to seeing. Her hair is straight, a style he admits looks really nice on her. Not only that, but she's wearing a fancy looking pink dress. It's such a shock that it takes Anon a few seconds to shake himself back to reality. Uh, you've been waiting here for me? She nods. Yep. For how long? A few hours. As different as Pinky looks, she's still the same Pinky. Anon looks around and finds that there isn't another pony in sight. Your friend? She's waiting for us at the restaurant. Care to tell me about her? Pinky shakes her head with a smile. Nope. Now let's go. Anon knew that wouldn't work, but it was worth a try. He just follows Pinky and wait for what is to come. Luna's looking at herself in the mirror. She takes a deep breath in and slowly lets it out. Anon, I wanted to explain a few things. I know you've been curious as to what my past holds, and since the unforeseen meeting with Nightmare Moon has happened, I feel that I must share a few things so that you may understand. Luna looks away from the mirror and shakes her head. <sighs> that won't work. She returns her gaze to her own reflection. Anon, I know you have many questions about Nightmare Moon. If you'll give me a moment, I shall tell you everything you wish to know. Luna notices her reflection start to morph slowly into a mock image of Anon. How can I even trust you anymore? He speaks. You lied to me! Luna bares her teeth as she punches the mirror and shatters it into pieces. In the shattered remains, she can see the laughing image of Nightmare Moon. There is one thing Luna will not tolerate, and that's some pony making a mockery of the one she trusts. That was your last mistake. Luna mumbles to herself. Luna's horn glows brightly as a loud, ear-piercing shriek enters into her mind. She forgot who was in charge, and now Luna must put her in her place. After a few minutes, Luna stops casting her spell, and the screams die out. As much as Nightmare Moon likes to think she's all-powerful, the elements have locked her into a dream world where she can feel pain. 
This is how Luna has been keeping her on a leash. Care to play with my emotions again? Luna asks Nightmare Moon. No. Nightmare Moon answers, past heavy panting. While I do enjoy your screams of agony, I prefer your silence. Nightmare Moon doesn't respond. Great. Now I must prepare for Anon when he falls asleep. Are you sure we should be here? Twilight is looking around from her table as Cadence tries her best to reassure her. This is the best place to learn about body language. How is watching ponies eating going to teach me about body language? Cadence chuckles. Because most of these ponies are on a date. Twilight raises her brow. So? That means they'll be talking to someone they like. You'll see all of the little minute details of their body as they become nervous, irritated, calm, joyful, and so many other emotions. Twilight thinks over what Cadence is saying. It's true that given the circumstances, this may allow her to observe a great deal about ponies. There's just so much going on that she's not too sure where to start. I guess that makes sense. Twilight looks down to her plate. But do we really have to order meals too? Cadence struggles a bit as a blush covers her face. I forgot to eat on my way to Canterlot, so this was the perfect excuse to get something to eat. Twilight feels uncomfortable right now. She can see how many ponies will sometimes glance at the ring on her horn and then quickly look away. It's like they think she's a dangerous animal from the Everfree. Cadence notices Twilight's discomforts, but she wasn't lying when she said that this would be a good way for her to experience body language in a more natural way. It's alright, Twilight. Just keep calm and take a look around. What do you see? Twilight puts a hoof to her chest while taking a breath in, and then extends her hoof out as she exhales. A trick Cadence taught her on keeping calm and centering her thoughts. It calms her enough to take a look around. She scans the room and can see a few ponies, all of them varying in colors. Oddly enough, one of them has a fur color that's rather bland. Twilight feels her eyes stop on this pony as she finds something horribly wrong with her. The pony looks dead, unmoving to everything that's around her. I... Uh, Cadence? Hmm? Twilight points to the pony. Is there something wrong with that pony? Cadence follows Twilight's hoof and instantly finds the pony in question. Oh, it seems this pony is stone-faced, not showing much, if any, emotions. She just sits there, looking at the door unmoving, not even drinking from her glass of water. She's so still that Cadence can't even tell if she's breathing. The only reason she knows the mare isn't dead is because of the fact that her eyes show plenty of life. Uh, there's nothing wrong with her, Twilight. She's a stone face. They are known to show little to no emotion. I bet her voice is monotone as well. How could I ever read a pony like that? Twilight asks, feeling more confused about this type of pony. It just adds more to what she needs to learn. Chances are you never will. They're rather complex. Most of the time, only family can easily connect with ponies like that. Not that it's impossible, mind you. It just isn't something that you'll get right away. Twilight has no idea how to feel about this. She just looks at the pony in question for a few moments before moving on. But before she can attempt to look at another pony, she notices that the stone-faced pony's eyes widen only by a few centimeters. Twilight has the odd feeling that the pony has seen something that's shocking. Twilight quickly looks towards the front door and feels her heart freeze. Anon is standing right there. Not just Anon, but Pinky as well. Twilight? Cadence can see the alarmed look on Twilight's face as she quickly looks away and covers her face. Cadence looks over to the door and feels her eyes widen as she spots a creature she's never seen before. What is that? Cadence asks. That's a nun. Twilight whispers. That's a nun? Cadence feels herself move to greet him, but is stopped by a hoof grabbing her. No! Twilight continues to whisper. He can't know I'm here. Who knows what might happen? No, oh, it can't be that bad, right? Cadence feels Twilight's grip on her increase. She can see fear in Twilight's eyes and decides to let her have this. Oh, very well. We'll stay here. We can't stay! We need to get out of here as fast as we can! Cadence shakes her head. 
you want to learn about body language, right? Twilight nods. I'll cast a spell to hide our presence. We'll watch and learn about him. This is what you've been waiting for. Twilight takes a moment to think. Luna's threat is still at the forefront of her mind, but decides to trust in Cadence. Oh, okay. As long as he doesn't know we're here. Cadence smiles at Twilight as she casts a spell that makes them less noticeable. Fancy place, Anon says, looking around. Sure is. Pinky answers with a grin as they follow the waiter to the table. The waiter sets three menus down at a table where a gray pony sits and wait for the both of them to take their seats. So this is the friend Pinky wants me to meet? He has to say that she doesn't seem like a friend Pinky would have. Her stone-like face and unmoving pose. Mod's eyes shift slowly over to Pinky as Pinky and Anon take a seat. Everything remains silent until Mod says something. Is this the Anon you spoke of? Pinky nods. Yep. Once again, everything becomes silent. Anon has no idea what's going on in Pinky's mind, so he decides to introduce himself to this pony. It seems Pinky has told you about me, but the same cannot be said about you. Anon comes in. Mod looks over at Anon. I'm Mod, Pinky's older sister. This is shocking to hear. Pinky has a sister? Not only that, but this is her sister? They are so different that it seems impossible that they're related. Anon then finds his mind flashing back to Pinky's dream. That small filly that was so different from the Pinky that he knew. Was Pinky like this when she was a kid? No time to think on that. He needs to focus. If Anon can't detect that Twilight and Cadence are there, then I have a feeling that one of his bodyguards will. Either that or Blossom herself will. Anywho, let's get on to our smooth donators. Top donators are 630, J10 Man, Only One Thing, Saru Orion, and Iron Sky. Darkseid, Raiden, Narwhals, Black Moonheart, Pastel Skies, Austin Rowland, Stu Hex, Sword Brother and Mordred, Omicron Lyra, Will, Chris, Twinkie, Riotzel, Badass Waffle, Shadow Moon, Luigi88, and many more fantastic people. Thank you all so much for watching this video and live life to the fullest.